Hello, welcome to Lost in Movies. I'm Alec Kerr, the film critic for the Conway Daily Sun, and I'm joined by... Your wonderful co-host, Jason, also known as Smokin' Jay. And you are kind enough to sponsor Lost We in are, Movies. yeah. Our, our company, Smokin' Jay's Wicked Barbecue, um, couldn't be prouder to be a part of this. You know, we've been doing it for a little while. Yep. You've been doing it for a long, long yeah. time. So it, it's an honor to jump in and help out. Um, yeah, and... Get our name out there as well. You know, come and see us. Yeah. I actually, we were running a good promotion. We're starting up Memorial Day weekend. Our season, our season officially kicks off up in Freiburg. Right. You can find us up there at the Puffin Company. Yep. Um, and if you mention this video, you'll get a free sandwich. Nice. So we're kind of nice. seeing if anybody's, you know, yeah. out there. Yeah. Let's let's get a little. Yeah. You know, come and eat. Everybody's yeah. been cooped up all winter. It's time. Yeah. 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 Get yeah. that good barbecue. Yes, sir. And they can find you on Facebook. And... Yeah. Facebook, Smoke and Jay's Wicked Barbecue. Look us up. Contact us if you've got any gigs coming up. We'd love to help. Great. So. All right. So we got three movies we're yeah, going to do today. Let's do it. Uh, so first up, we're going to do uh, Dungeons and Dragons. You're representing it with the shirt. I'm so representing. Thieves. Yep. And uh, you didn't get to see it, unfortunately. No, I'm a terrible co host. Yeah. So I'm going to just kind of have to uh, kind of get into it myself <laughs> here a little bit. Uh, I don't really know anything about D and D. You you have a book. You I seem do. To have yeah, some oh, yes. knowledge. I have very good knowledge. About you do. This. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. So uh, so I went in without any really no any knowledge. I, I had seen the terrible movie that came out in two thousand. Oh, yeah. Which I, is just I just unfortunately abysmally saw that awful. as well, and it was terrible. Uh, so I didn't really know what to expect, and this movie is insanely entertaining, is like from the get go. Everyone I've talked to that's seen it, my brother is a huge D&D &D, uh, player as well, and he's gotten his wife into it a little bit, mm -hmm. and she went and saw it, knowing very little, but one of the characters in the movie is the same character that she's playing in her campaign. Oh, uh, okay. So she was like, oh, I know this, I know him, and yeah. was like hooked from that moment yeah, on, yeah. so it, yeah, they got uh, great reviews from them. Yeah, because Chris Pine plays a, a bard, so he's sort of a yep. uh, little bit of a... He's got a sense of humor. He's uh, kind of playful. He likes to make plans. He's he's very charismatic. Yep. He's very entertaining. Mm -hmm. uh, Michelle Rodriguez is a barbarian, which is just perfect. Uh, and her whole thing is that she's just incredibly blunt to the and it's like, dude, come on. <laughs> yeah. And she has a thing with potatoes. She just loves potatoes. If you inter inter interrupt her while she's eating a potato, it's your you're, life. You're done. Yeah. <laughs> you're done. <laughs> Berserk mode engaged. Yeah, it's great. She's messing you up. Uh, and uh, Hugh Grant is in it as a as a thief who naturally betrays his his band of mm. of men. And uh, he's kind of the the main villain, secondary villain, because there's the, a red witch who's involved as well. Kind of a little. That's kind of the one part of the movie where I was a little underwhelmed. The red witch, what her plan is, kind of meh. Mm. But it's just an excuse for for fun and action. Sure. Oh yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 yeah, I can't wait to see it. I will go out and see it this week. I'm sure with yeah, my daughter. It's... She's into D and D. We've been running a campaign now for about three months with some cousins and uh, some nice. family members down in southern New Hampshire. Uh, it's been a, yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. And what I'm hearing from from people who have play the, play the game, including like uh, Bill Edmonds over at Valley Vision, who's been a D and D player since the '80s, like oh, yeah. OG D and D player, uh, he just loved it. Mm -hmm. And but it's also made in a way that's really accessible to people who know nothing about it. Oh, yeah. Which, that's a really hard line to, to pull. Like, yep. to have it be something that hardcore fans can spot Easter eggs all over the place, mm -hmm. but then just a casual person who has no knowledge can go in. A great introduction in, into, this, yeah. into this world that you get to play with. I yeah. mean, they were... It, yeah, it had a stigma back in the day with like oh, only geeks and nerds play yeah. D and D, and it's getting such a beautiful glow up now. Yeah, um, it's just great to see a whole new generation of people coming in and playing. I mean, there's groups on Facebook all over the place looking for players to play. It's 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 awesome. Well, maybe you can help me because uh, a couple of years ago, Ashley and I got. Rick and Morty Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> but we don't really know how to play Dungeons and Dragons. We need someone to be I will our, DM. Our, 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 yeah, we need oh, someone I got to be you. Our, our, Absolutely. our master. Our dragon, yeah, our no dungeon problem. master. We'll set All right, it up. We gotta do it's it. It's done. Uh, it has its own like set of rules and everything. Oh, yeah. And I know you love Rick and Morty. So. I, I'm so in. So we yeah. gotta make that happen. Yep. Uh, and 
the what I also really like about it is one of the co-directors is John Francis Daly. Uh, he was in the show Freaks and Geeks. Yep. Uh, yep. And he was one of the geeks playing Dungeons and Dragons. Mm -hmm. So his career has like come full circle now. He went from being a geek in a TV show as a teenager playing D and D to directing and co-writing a D and D movie. Oh yeah. 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 And he was a, a co-writer of Spider-Man Homecoming. And so I feel like that was sort of a little bit of like training ground because mm -hmm. they kind of brought a little bit of that Marvel formula mm. to this because it has the sense of humor and the quirky characters. And so I think that was kind of the training ground for this movie. Yeah. Yeah. If, you, if, if you're looking to get into it and learn some of the rules, YouTube has the best videos. Look up uh, Critical Role. Oh yep, and I've heard the, of that, I mean yeah. the, you have more videos and hours to watch the, them playing D and D. That's probably human, humanly physical to watch. Yeah, <laughs> you know, but and they're amazingly entertaining. They're all voice actors. Yeah, and it's so much fun. They they're behind Vox Machnia. Okay, yeah, yep. Yeah. Yeah. So that's their season one of their campaign is nice is tr transformed into that show now. So it's, yeah. It, yeah. So yeah, if you are like apprehensive about D and D because you do think it's only for for geeks and nerds, yeah. like give this because this is give it a so whirl. much fun. Yeah. Like I would say, in terms of tone, it's very similar to like the first Pirates of the Caribbean or the Mummy mm -hmm. with Brendan Fraser. Mm -hmm. uh, just because it's, it's adventure, it's fun, it's kind of got that tongue in cheek tone. Like that's what this kind of is. Yep. So yeah, Excellent. give it a whirl. Yeah, go check it out. Uh, so now let's get into uh, Super Mario. Oh yes, uh, I was waiting for this. Oh okay, yeah. Because I w went into this being a product of, you know, being a 90s kid, yep. you know, born in the 80s, going through the 90s, the Super Mario Brothers movie, my uncle and I went out to see it. Yep. And oh, it was so disappointing. Yeah. And now it's, it's 30 years later. 30 years later. That movie was so bad. Oh, that yeah, they, they couldn't touch it. No, for Nintendo, 30 years. Nintendo refused to allow anybody access to any of their characters oh man and you know playing the games and growing up it i loved it yeah loved it yeah it hit all the right nostalgic feels it was i thought it was great yeah, yeah. i i can't say enough good about this movie go and yeah. see it yeah bring your kids it is so much fun for the adults as well there's i was belly laughing through yeah. half of that movie oh my goodness yeah it was great it was great yeah. and you know, I'm part of a a film critic society, and like some of the critics, are, they're being critics, uh, and I, I hate to say that because I I have been writing film criticism for for over a decade now. Yep. Uh, but some critics have their head up their you know you know what, and uh, I yeah I don't know what they were expecting. I saw one person write that if your age. If you're not 10 years old or really familiar with Super Mario, this isn't going to be for you. And that's not me. This did nothing for me. And I'm like, okay. Well, that's what people like. People that but like Super Mario are going to go see it. That's right. The thing. And, and that movie was not made for him. Right. It was made for us. Right. And it was made for the new generation of kids that are getting into this. I mean, Universal Studios just opened up Super Mario right. World. We were just there a month or two before they did their soft yeah. opening, which was a bummer because everything was done. You, you could, could see, see everything. Yeah. Like the cat, you're coming down the escalators, and there's Bowser's castle. It's awesome. Yeah. Uh, they already had merch up, you know, but you just couldn't get into that right. portion you of the park. Couldn't get part. into that section, yeah. And uh, so it was just an excuse to have to go back and do it again because now we got to experience Super Mario World. There you go. But uh. So I don't know, like, uh, I mean, talking about how D&D &D was accessible to fans and non-fans, like, I guess if you're not into Super Mario, you're not going to like this Correct. movie. Yeah, if you weren't a gamer but as a kid. I, and I don't know, like, I... Because, man, I don't know what people are expecting. Because I don't know what what more like, do I've you heard want? people say, "Oh, the story isn't very good, and it doesn't really have any like hip humor, I, or, or it isn't subversive, or anything like that." I think people want it to be like the Barbie movie that's coming out, which has this like really oh. subversive angle on it, and like is really doing something interesting and different with the character. But that's you don't need to have that with this. I think no. all people wanted, especially after that first movie, was to see. Super Mario in a movie like he is in the game. Correct. And if they didn't, if you don't think they did that in this movie, I think you're so wrong. Yeah. 
I mean, th th just one of the opening sequences was like playing a level. Yeah. When he was going to work with Luigi and he's yeah, flipping he, through he, the, you know, doing it, parkour all what, over the place. And it what was, was perfect. Yeah. It was, it was like, cool oh about man, it. the music hit. Yeah. I mean, if you didn't get goosebumps in the first five minutes of that movie, you're not meant to see this movie. Yeah. Honestly. Yeah. And what was great about that scene is that it was structured like a 2D side stroller. Yeah, stroller. it was. I mean, they and they do that throughout. And yeah. There's a whole the training montage with Princess Peach and Mario. Yeah. But you know, and I also was watching somebody, uh, Andre the Black Nerd. I don't know if you've ever watched him on YouTube. He's no. great. He has the he's the most enthusiastic person you'll ever find on the internet. And when right. he like starts laughing, it's the greatest thing. If you're having a bad day, just watch this guy. It'll right. make you feel better. But he made a good point that for people saying there's no depth, like. And it also kind of ties back to the video game that there's this theme that Mario never quits, which is sort of like you, the player, never having to quit. In that training montage, at first he's not very good, but then he gets better. Yeah. Just like you, when it, you were playing the game, yes, you would it, get better. I mean, yeah, the plot isn't Oscar worthy. No, it's very simple. Were you expecting? No, you know, it's Bowser is going to come Brothers and take movie, over. You know? <laughs> Bowser is going to come and take over the Mushroom Kingdom let's, because he wants to marry Daisy. Let's talk about. Bowser. Or Peach, Princess Peach. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, but we got we, we must talk we must it. talk Bowser because oh, it's Jack Black, and it's glorious. And it's because glorious because it is Jack Black, he had to sing a song. Oh man, and it's yes. going viral. It, it is makes, because it's so worthy. It's, oh, it's peaches, just peaches, 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 peaches. That's what we all yeah. we do at the house yeah. now. We'll walk by the kid and peaches, peaches. <laughs> Uh, I was on Magic the other morning, and I had them play it. I had them play it on the radio. It's great, and you got to stay through the post credits because you get the follow up to yep. uh, the Bowser ballad. So, and Jack it, Black is just so selling it. Like uh, he has like the intimidating <laughs> like Bowser yep. voice, but then he also is really pathetic <laughs> because oh, he's man. trying to woo Peach, yes. and he just. She's like, come on, marry me. And she's like, no. <laughs> what? No. Yeah, it's... Oh, uh, it was so good. I mean, I didn't know all of the cast going yeah. into it, you know. And so finding out Seth, Seth Rogen's playing Donkey Kong yeah. was hilarious. Yeah. Because I didn't know until he did his his famous Seth yeah. Rogen laugh. <laughs> I was yeah. like, what? Yeah. <laughs> it's great. Yeah. It was so entertaining. Yeah, it's a simple plot, but... Yeah, you don't need it, much with it's it. It's a and movie based off of a, a simple video game. Right. And it also does incorporate all the other like iterations of the game. Oh, like, yeah. When there's the, the battle between Mario and Donkey Kong, it feels like Smash Brothers. Yes. Uh, then there's a Mario Kart sequence. Oh, and, Donkey Kong Country. When they yeah. go, and, uh, it was just, it yeah. hit all the nostalgic feels for me as a kid growing up playing these video games. If you can make it better, yeah. do it. We yeah. want to see it, but good luck. Yeah. You know, I, I think they I've nailed it. I've heard other people nitpick that it, like, it was spending too much time trying to set up, set up a Nintendo universe. I was like, was it though? Not really, except that they went to Donkey Kong Country. Other than that, like, it's not like, oh, here's the Kirby world and here's... Uh, yeah. It, it didn't I mean, do that. No. No, I didn't feel like they were trying to set up a whole universe because we already know this universe. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're yeah. not introducing anything to anyone. I will say, the the beginning of the movie, I was enjoying it, but before they got to the Mushroom Kingdom, it was a little like, okay, this is sort of a bit of just kind of a generic animated movie. Like, there's a whole thing where they go to do a, a plumbing job, and there's this whole bit with a dog. It's funny. Oh, the dog it, bit was pretty funny. It was really funny, but it also yeah. didn't feel... Like a Mario, it felt like that could have been literally any character interacting. I really with that felt dog. like the beginning of of this one was very reminiscent to the beginnings of the original yes. Super Mario Brothers. Like they're in New York City yeah. as real people, you know, uh, and then they find the portal yep. and off to Mushroom Kingdom they go. They go, yeah. So very much like the the original, but where they differ is they kept it. They kept. The essence of the video game. And the movie. essence of the characters, yeah. Right. Because right. Luigi is kind of a little bit scared, which goes back to Luigi's mansion where he's in a haunted house. And right. so they kind of pull that aspect of the mm -hmm. character in. Mm -hmm. And yeah, but to go back to that, I've watched that original live action movie a couple times recently. And <laughs> it's. I'm sorry. It's not a good movie, but I don't know. There's something about it. <laughs> it you, 
you have to kind of <coughs> detach yourself from the fact that it is Super Mario. And there's something interesting about it. Like, the production design, the set designer on that, is the same as did Blade Runner. And wow. so they have this whole, like, dino Hatton thing. Because they do this whole bizarre thing where there's a parallel dinosaur universe. Yep. Where they all evolve to still look like humans. It's dumb. Yeah, it's oh, yeah. really yeah. dumb. But Dino Hatton was designed by the same person that did Blade Runner, so mm. it looks really cool. And, and and I don't think that was ever. I think the biggest the biggest problem with that movie was the cast hated each other yes. and hated what they were doing. So there was no love put into. No, and it. they were sold a different movie. Right. Uh, it was supposed to be, for whatever reason, a dark, gritty movie. It was supposed to be like Mad Max with Mario characters, which actually sounds pretty amazing. I'd check that out. Yeah. And so but they, they signed on up for that, but then. The studio got scared, and they're like, oh, well, we have to lighten it up. We have to make it a kid's movie. Mm. And so you have this wild tonal shift where mm. you have these dark elements and, like, this fun, whimsical mm -hmm. score, and it doesn't really quite work. But it's kind of a fascinating mess if you can detach yourself from this isn't really <laughs> Super Mario Brothers. No, yeah, if they could have changed all of that, it wouldn't, yeah. it wouldn't have gotten as bad of a reviews as it, no. as it has. But, uh, yeah. but hey, it was the first ever video game movie, so I think there was this idea of like, oh, well, this is a movie. We have to make it a movie. We can't make it like the video game. Mm -hmm. We have to make it a movie. And so they came up with all these crazy ideas to make it more like a movie. That's, yeah, and, that's a fair point, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. But, it's... It's a bizarre little movie, but I, mean, I think they learned their lesson. They did, and it was yeah. Yeah, I can't wait to watch it again. Yeah, that's one. We and then there's been a lot of controversy yeah. around, or there was before the movie was even released, of Chris Pratt being Mario, and he's fine. The voice that was yeah. a big thing. I remember like pre like oh he's not doing the Mario voice. They addressed that so beautifully in the first two minutes of the, yeah. the movie, the actual that voice it's not act, even a question after that. The actual voice actor is in the movie yep. and does do the Mario voice. Yep. But you, the way they address it, I thought, was perfect. Yeah. And he he's awesome. Chris Pratt, he, he does great. Yeah. And here's he's the great. thing, like, everybody, like, what's in this voice for Mario? But, no, like, you know. that voice came back in, like, I think, like, Mario 64. Like, yep. he didn't have a voice for the first few games mm -hmm. because that just wasn't a thing. Um, if you go back, there were eight cartoons in the 80s where he had, like, this Brooklyn accent. And that's why Bob Hoskins, when he did the movie, he had a Brooklyn accent. Yep. And they kind of split the difference here. It's a little bit of that sort of Brooklyn accent with the, the Mario voice. Yep. It, like it kind of, Chris Pratt does a good job. He does. They, I, I thought they all did a great job. Yeah, Charlie yeah. Day as Luigi <laughs> is really great. Excellent. Uh, Anya Taylor-Joy as uh, Peach is really cool because... They have her not just be a damsel in distress. They have her no, she's, be yeah, very she's, active. She's a hero in her own right. Yeah. And some she, people she's been, the one that trains Mario. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And some great. people have been like, oh, well, she that's going against the character. But there was a game where you could play as Peach. I yes. think it was Super Mario Brothers 2. Mm -hmm. So it, it it's in canon. Whatever. Just <laughs> deal with it. Deal with it. <laughs> some people have been like, Kids why is she not it. in a dress the whole time? Because sometimes she wears a suit when with a, 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 a jumpsuit when she's riding her bike. What, what, yeah. what is your problem? There's just too much nerd rage in this world right now. Oh, for real, yeah. I yeah. mean, enjoy it. It's a great ride. It's hilarious. Yeah. There are moments it's, that were truly, truly funny. And it's beautifully animated. Like, it is beautifully animated. They did not cheap animated, out no. on this movie. No, it looked like a... a like the Nintendo 64 game. Yeah. Really clean cut. You're pl watching the game play out as a movie. And it, yeah. I loved it. Yeah, yeah. It was great. Yeah, and the Mario Kart sequence was... Was fantastic. fantastic. Yeah. Yep. Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just really well handled. Yeah. I loved it. Um, so when we talked about, you know, a month ago, like what our next episode was going to be, I said, well, we should do Mario and John Wick. I'm like, that is a bizarre double feature. What a bizarre double feature. Um, and I was like, well, what's the link? And I have the link. Coins. Cold coins. Coins are the Gold link. Gold coins. <laughs> Those Jeez. are the links between... <laughs> Super Mario yes. and John Wick. And these, actually, I bought like a DVD set where you got the actual coins yep. in John Wick. Because That's so what's awesome. fascinating about John Wick is that it started out as this pretty simple movie of a guy who was a former assassin. His dog is killed, and he's like, that's it. Yeah, you all have to die now. Beautiful revenge movie. Yeah, and that yeah. was it. It was a pretty simple movie, but there were hints in there of this other universe mm. of assassins, the secret underground society of assassins. And the coins are kind of like the currency. Yeah, of like, that's kind of the key to all things And like one coin 
will get you a hotel room. It'll get you a guns. It'll Just get you a everything. suit. It'll get you anything. Yeah. There's this whole sort of barter system, uh, and which each film, this world has expanded more and more and more, and you get more understanding of the rules and all the uh, different like leadership mm -hmm. tiers and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's it's kind of fascinating, uh, especially in this day and age, for an original idea to spin off into a franchise, an original idea that started out as like a $40 million, $20 million like indie film yep. for it to become one of the biggest action oh. franchises oh, ever. Man. It's yes. in, it's unheard of. And if you remember when we did our uh, 40 movies for 40 years, yeah. this John Wick 4 was the one I was most looking forward yeah. to seeing this year. Boy, oh boy. Yeah. It did not disappoint. No. Wow. Yeah. Just, <laughs> It's insane. Yeah. Um, th three hours of just nonstop action. Yeah. And it, it was, it just, so it was crazy. There's a sequence yeah, it, within oh. the first hour at, um, there are these series of hotels, the Continental. Yep. Where they're basically safe havens for these assassins. And they're all over the world. And there's this one sequence in Japan uh, at the Japanese Continental that, would basically be the climax for most movies. Oh, and most action. Yes, and, and this it, is just it, just the warm up. Yeah, you're just getting warmed up. Ooh, boy. Yeah. I mean, his body count in this movie is 170 something, I think. Oh, you looked it up. Yeah, it, it's like high <laughs> almost 200 people he mercs in this movie. <laughs> That's great. And man, so what I I loved about it is throughout the whole series you're getting hints of what he had to do to get out. Yes. The first time to be with his wife. Right. The impossible task and the bodies he buried that day built the foundation of the high table and where this this world right. is, this organization is now. Boy, well, you get a taste of what he does. Well, you, you get to see what he does to get out again. Right. And it is incredible. It is amazing. Man. Uh, <sighs> and it was so fun seeing this with an audience because, and I think, like, a lot of people have said, oh, there's no point in going to movies anymore. But movies ah. like this remind you of what it's like to yeah, see a movie right. with an audience. Oh, because there's a moment, because we've went, well, this was with our fourth movie with John Wick. We've seen him pick up all different kinds of weapons and even oh, just objects and I, turn them into mech weapons, like a book or a pencil. You talking the nunchucks? Yeah. Yes. He picks up a pair of nunchucks and the entire audience, it was like they levitated. Like oh, everyone was like, like what? Like we didn't know we wanted to see John Wick kill people with nunchucks until he picked them up. Yeah. And then it was like, yes, yeah. please. Yes, we need this. And he did it so, so he's a master with the pistol. Yeah. And, and knives, everything he picks up. Everything. The nunchucks. He was a bit clumsy with. Yeah. But still nonetheless deadly. Yeah. But you could tell that he was just literally... John Wick is as deadly with a newspaper. Yeah. Whatever he could get his hands on, he was killing you with. Yeah. Pencils. Yeah. He he found the nunchucks and oh, it was an awesome sequence. Yeah, and it was yeah, almost like so he amazing. was using him like a, a mace or something. A or just baseball like a bat, bat just at like one whack. point. He was two-handing it and just, <laughs> and it was, I've never seen nunchucks used that yeah. way in a fight. And that's the thing, ooh, there's this baby, they interesting awesome. like action choreography that is unexpected oh, and it's yes. because it's directed by a former stuntman and yeah. so he knows what people can do he knows limitations yeah and he just pushes the boundaries it's chad i can never remember how to uh, pronounce his last name but he was keanu reeves stuntman for the matrix movies so they have this history they have this understanding mm -hmm. they understand uh like a, a, an Excuse unspoken me. language between them where they know their limits and how far to push things. Oh, and yeah, it was it. Yeah, it was it was incredible. The the stair sequence at the end. Yeah. Uh, that poor stunt man. Yeah. Cause yeah, he just and, and it it's an incredible stunt <laughs> it, where he just keeps going down stunt. a flight of stairs and he just keeps tumbling and I tumbling mean, and tumbling. Yeah, it must be a hundred yards. Yeah. Of steep. Yeah. Concrete stairs. Yeah. And he goes from the very top to the very bottom. There's been and, a... Yeah. It's, it's just... It's pretty one of the coolest stunts I've ever seen on film. And yeah, there's been this real it. big push for the Academy Awards to have a category for stunts. Like stunt work. And if there was ever a movie... Give that. If there was ever a movie to be like, here's the real to prove that we need this category. Because the stunt work in this is insane. 
Like, oh, insane, it's, yeah. It's, it's mind-boggling. Yeah. There's a sequence at the tri tri the Arc de Triumph. Yep. Where you mm. have all these assassins. There's, like, traffic going around the circle. And you have the assassins coming. You have John Wick in a car. John Wick getting out of a car. It, like, the logistics of it are mind-boggling. Oh, yeah. And yeah. it's not faked. It it's actually being done. Practical effects, and they're I mean they're doing it. They got stunt it, drivers out there. Uh, Keanu Reeves, the word is he got so good at the driving aspect of this. Yeah, that they, you know it was he was too good. He was too good. Like, and they do this thing, and they've done it in multiple bad, movies where man. they rip the doors off of the car so you can get a clear shot and see <sighs> that it is Keanu Reeves behind oh, and the he's wheel. He's doing all of it. Yeah. It is awesome. And yeah. I heard an interview with him say that. Um, how he was asked how much he does, and he's like, "Well, if there's action, I'm doing it. Yeah. But the minute like I'm falling out of a building or something, or getting hit yeah, by a car, that's yeah. when the stunt yeah. guy comes in. Yeah. He does all his own action, not yeah. his stunts. Not his stunts. Yeah. Some guy gets hit by the car. John yeah. Wick pops up, <laughs> fights fifty guys. <laughs> you know, the falls that he takes in this. Yeah. On on the level of superhuman. Yeah, and to be I honest, suppose but... that could be a little bit of, for some people it might take them out of the movie. Because your suspension of disbelief has to go really far in this movie. On one, yeah. Man, that uh, one I... fall he takes is like, yeah. there's no way. Yeah, there's like, and, and the, <laughs> the, the, your... the flight of stairs thing. Like... Again, every bone in your body is <laughs> smashed to pieces at the end of that. Uh, it, oh. But they even kind of acknowledge this because there's this great new character. Kane. Yes. He's like, okay, John, you got to get back up. And he always just shakes it off, stumbles a little bit, and then he's he's back. Yeah. Uh, but maybe I, it's I, the suit. Maybe it is the suit. It is a Kevlar suit. You can't, you know, it's a bulletproof suit, which is hilarious because he's always like pulling up. I love <laughs> his like... technique. Grabs the lapel and he's just up. And... Yeah. yeah. But this great. character, Kane, uh, played by Donnie Yang, he is a blind assassin and it's a new character, but it's done so well. It f mm. You feel like you've known this character the entire franchise. Yeah. yeah he's uh, always been a part of this world, and it, yeah. it, it definitely feels that way. Yeah. yeah, and you've sensed there's this long history between Kane and John, and Kane has been tasked with, with killing him. Uh, That's pretty much everyone in the entire world has been yes. tasked. But, like, he has serious stakes like it's yeah. like if you don't do this yeah his daughter his daughter is gonna yeah yeah, yeah and it's serious so he's like john i, I don't want to kill you but i have to and and john's like no i i understand mm -hmm. and they have to, like these scenes where they just talk to each other and it's very clear that they have a deep mutual respect yeah they also have friendship yeah if they're if you could have a true friend in this world yeah. they would be they would be good friends yeah they are good friends and the ending is beautiful with yeah them. and uh yeah, yeah. Mm. And they're also, what I love about John Wick and this whole universe is there's this bizarre sort of like honor among thieves and code of like, well, you know, I do have to kill you, but let's just sit and talk for a little bit. And yeah. like, maybe there's a moment where they're playing a poker game <laughs> with this guy that John has to kill to get back in the family so that he can oh, That face is off. one of the best fight scenes in the entire movie in yeah. my mind it was oh, it, but like everyone's awesome. there to kill john wick but yeah. they're sitting with this guy he's played by scott atkins who is a martial artist in his own right yeah yeah uh and they all are like you know what we hate this guy so much we're gonna put aside killing john wick just so you can kill him yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> we don't take like, care of him first take, you, we'll, we'll, we'll step out of the way yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's great oh man uh, yeah now that, it's yeah. It's a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, there's another character who calls himself Mr. Nobody. I can't remember the name of the actor. And he's also referred to as the tracker. And he's kind of just watching John Wick. And he's he has a threshold. Like, he wants to kill John Wick to get the money. But if he doesn't reach his price point, he's not going to do it. So yeah. he's kind of an ally, kind of an adversary. Yeah, he's playing the middleman there, yeah. kind of pulling both yeah. sides. But a uh, great character, by the way. Yeah, yeah that was a lot of fun. Um, I do know who that is. I've seen him in a few yeah. other things, but I can't think uh, of it right now. And then now, the but... main kind of big bad of it is played by Bill Skarsgård. Yeah. He's the marquee, and he's very uh, high up in the high table. This, Yeah, he has a seat at the high table. Yeah. 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 And to get out, John has to kill him in single combat. Yeah, he challenges him to a duel, part yes. of the rules of this underworld that uh, 
if you're challenged to a duel, you have to do you it. Have to, you have to duel. And that's the only way that John Wick can, can get out. In, the wor- in this world of rules where not everyone on the planet is just going to kill him on sight. If they can, because they try. Yep. Especially going up that flight of stairs. Yep. We didn't mention that. We yep. mentioned him going down. <laughs> He has to get up at first, and that's no small task right, either. Because the, to, to, <laughs> he has to get to this duel by sunrise, and it's he, he's, it's almost sunrise, and yeah. he's like he gets to the top, he's killed like hundreds yeah. of people, and then he falls down the all the way back stairs, to the bottom. Like, like no. oh no, uh, yeah, it's in. That's a pretty continuously long shot of yeah. action as well. I mean, that is some yeah impressive stunt work by everyone involved, because it is insane. And that's the other thing yeah. with this direction, is that uh, it is if it's not one single tracking shot, it's done where the cuts are hidden very, very well. Oh, very well. And so yeah. there's not a lot of fast editing. So mm-hmm. These what sequences you're seeing is what, are, are sequences, yeah. man, and they just go. These fights are choreographed out the entire length yeah. for most of them. I'm sure some have some cuts and whatever, but... Yeah. Yeah, it, it's fantastic. The action, the way that they shot the action in this is just the top-down shot. Yes. Oh, yeah. one of the best sequences. Like, it rivals the uh, the Kingsman sequence in the church when mm-hmm. he goes insane yep. on everybody. It's yep. like on that level of, like, wasn't expect. It was like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was you like, know? and it was also a mm. little bit of a directorial flair that we hadn't really seen before. So it is this over-the-head yeah. shot. Great shot, uh, yeah. And it's, uh, what is it, Dragon's Breath? Yeah, you're shooting Dragon's Breath out of the, the shotgun. So you're just getting a top-down look like you're playing Bullet Echo. Yeah. You know, and just the fire blasting out the shotgun, people going through the walls, and they just pan it through this whole building. Yeah. Awesome sequence. Unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, it's almost something you'd see like like Tarantino do or yes, something. Yes, it was yeah, it was excellent. Yeah. yeah, very well done. I mean, they win. Yeah. John and Wick wins. John Wick he wins best the best action, <laughs> best shots to the face, like just yeah. best yeah, best yeah. stunt. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, and it's also the most beautiful of all of these films. Like the cinematography yeah. on this is absolutely gorgeous. Oh, great. Yeah. I mean, you get another great rave scene, which has been a following, yeah. following sequence on all the on, in all the movies. They there's going to be a gunfight in a in a rave. Yeah, but everybody's so oblivious to it. That's yeah. the funniest part. Which I think is <laughs> I think there's a little bit of like self awareness in that regard. Yeah. Uh, same with him, like sort of being invincible. Like it's acknowledged. Yeah. So <laughs> the fact that I mean, he, a couple of people would be like, "What's going on over there?" Oh, okay, let's just keep dancing. <laughs> yeah, and. <laughs> It's just a trail of bodies through this whole yeah. nightclub, but nobody nobody really cares. Yeah, I guess that's common practice in this world. Yeah, so be careful. Well, this is the world. Of, this is the, the world of a hidden world of assassins. I think everyone's yeah. just like, oh look, it's that hidden world of assassins no, again. Let's just no. ignore it. Oh, that's the other thing I wanted to mention. There's this great, and I almost wish it had been used a little bit more, but there's this great idea of the assassins DJ basically. Yeah, who is like. Drop in some songs and like giving guidance to the assassins. Like, all right, John Wick is over here, but it's all coded. Yeah. yeah. And there's some great like track drops in there. Uh, there's one like mm-hmm. uh, Nowhere to Hide. Uh, is, and then there's a really cool French version of Paint It Black. Hmm. Yeah, uh, yeah. And I wish it had been done a few more times because it's an opportunity. Because <laughs> this has never been a franchise where you can throw like songs into the <laughs> franchise. So this was a way to do that. And it was done really clever. And I wish they'd thrown maybe like one more song yeah, in there. Yeah, just a few more. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah, it was a cool great. concept. And you just see this this woman at the mic just, and all you see is her lips being like, all right, your target is now over here. And it was just right. really, yeah. really fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. It was, yeah. yeah. And if I were to like nitpick, because I do, it is long. I didn't feel the length at no. all. No, me either. It, yeah, it's almost three hours. What, two hours, two 45, hours, something like that? Yeah, it two was, hours, 50, I think. <clears throat> but it flies by. It's so entertaining. Yeah. I would, it, The action just keeps you... It yeah. keep, the movie keeps moving. There's never like a dull moment where you're... Uh, yeah. I, you if know. there was one scene, I would cut because I don't... It does prove how sadistic the marquee is. But there is a scene with that Mr. Nobody character... Mm-hmm. Where he is told to do something to prove his loyalty. Oh, yeah. And it, it is kind of graphic in a way that you don't expect from a John Wick movie. And I think it might take some people out a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah it's, pretty, it's pretty rugged. Yeah. That's pretty rough. I, I don't know if it was necessary. If I were to cut something, 
I might cut that. It, but this is like getting into like yeah. nitpicky kind of stuff. Yeah. This is a really good We do movie. know that the high table requires a sacrifice. Like John yeah. Wick gave a finger. Yeah. You know, you learn that Kane ended up, uh, that's how he lost his eyes in right. some of the backstory you get from him is to the high table to show, you know, to pledge his fe fealty. Yeah. You know? Um, and yeah, the guy's got to do something to his hand that's pretty brutal. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> and then I also was kind of like not... It was, the opening has, like, John Wick on horseback, like, chasing after some people. And it was cool, but I'm like, this isn't really connecting with me. At our, it doesn't really connect with the rest of the movie. Like, he does kill somebody, and it was somebody he shouldn't have killed, sort of thing. But, like, I, I don't know. I could have done without that. But the again, horse this is, chasing sequence, yeah. I think you could have just opened it up with him talking to the guy. Yeah. And then executing him, which is really, like, kicking off the war against the high table. Like, right. Like, this is where they realize John Wick isn't. He, he's fighting back. Yeah, I mean, yeah. But that, that again, this is like getting yeah. into like nitpick, itty, you know, nitty gritty kind of stuff. Uh, I don't know if we want to do a spoiler here. We have to. Okay, let's get into a spoiler because there is some debate here. Yeah. I think it's pretty definitive, but there is some debate. So, spoiler, I mean, we're pretty deep into the show now. So John I think Wick dies. John Wick does die. Yeah. And there's some debate because you don't, you see him collapse, it's from kind of far away, and then you see his grave, and some people are like, oh, well, he's not really dead. No, BS, I call, don't, don't, if the writers, future people, please, don't do it. Yeah. Don't do a fifth one no. that where he's alive. Please give him that death, because it's beautiful. It's beautiful. And he, he looks to Winston, will you please take me home? That's yeah. not, will you take, will you take my body home, right. is what he's asking. Yeah. He knows he's only got a few moments left. Yeah. And, he'd also and when he pulls... And he pulls the belt and drops all of his gun clips and everything. He's done. Yeah. How can you get him back into this world after? Right. It would cheapen. There's no. Yeah. It would cheapen. It would spoil it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Stay with the ballerina aspect. Time jump. If he's gonna make a cameo, cool. Yes, because there there is a spinoff movie called The Ballerina. Yeah. Uh, and it's supposed to be set between three and four. It is already confirmed that John Wick will make a cameo. Awesome. So if you want a little bit more John Wick, there you go. There you go. But don't ask to bring him back no. because it would cheapen it. I, it, I would be so disappointed yeah. because that ending was so good. Yeah. So, uh, just, so good. Just leave it alone. Please. And especially since there's so much in this world that is worth exploring. Carry on. You open the world up. The, that Kane character yeah. deserves its own movie. Oh, that, man. Give him an the, the origin The Mr. Nobody story. could yes. have its own movie. Yeah. There's so take much it, that could be done. You could take it a million different ways. Yeah. John Wick can be present. His essence is in this yeah. world. Everyone knows about John Wick yeah. in this world. Carry that legacy on that way, but... Yeah, there's supposed to be John a, Wick a, must, a continental series dead. that's that being developed. Be cool. there's a, Let's check it out. Yeah, but Expand the world. Expand the world. John Wick's a huge part of this world, obviously, but yeah. let the man... He got his... Yeah, it was beautiful. Yeah, he Perfect. got his piece. It was he, awesome. He got out... He's going to get to be with his wife. Yep. It's great. He, he got out. He got out the right way. He kills the bad guy in the most awesome of ways. In this, yeah. Because the duel, it, ah, it's so Yeah, good. we don't want to spoil, spoil any part of that because that's Because awesome. it's done really well. Yeah. He gets out with honor. He yep. gets out. And that, that yeah. just that sentence to Winston, will you take me home? I was almost like, <laughs> yeah. good job. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And again, beautifully shot. The yeah. sun is rising. Is there. It's just, ugh. Yeah. Great. Leave, please. Don't touch it. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't take that away because yeah, you'll cheapen it. Yeah. But, it, but what would, what could you do, it, to John Wick's character that would bring him back to that world? Yeah. You like can't. I was nothing. already, I was already kind of iffy with four and four delivered, but right. after three, I was like, how are you gonna like, how are you gonna do this again? Like if right. we do it a fifth time, it's like it's overkill. Yeah, it's overkill. What I mean, and what is he? He's gonna. It's almost like resetting because he, he got out and it's like, oh, well, I'm going to go back in. That's yeah. what the whole, that's, that's what one whole was. Thing. Yeah, this whole four is, he ain't coming back into this right. world, man. No way. No. So mm -mm. leave it, leave it, leave, leave it, it be. Leave it be. Start something new. Yeah. Great. Awesome. Love John Wick. It sucks that he's dead. Yeah. Because I would see another one if the storyline could support that, but yeah. it can't. Don't do it. You, yeah. You, yeah. And, and in terms of other characters, Lawrence Fishburne, we haven't talked about him. As yeah, the Bowery King. See him? Give him a movie. To power. I mean, I would, yeah. I'm yeah. down for all of that. Yeah. Yep. And Lawrence Fishburne, he's like super quirky in his line delivery. Like, give him his own movie. <laughs> Just give his own movie. He's nuts. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's, uh, he's, yeah. So that's like three recommendations here. Like, yeah. I was, I yeah. Was, you said, that, like, you're excited. Like, this has been a good year for good movies. Good year for movies so far. Yeah. I'm excited. Yeah. What's, uh, I don't know what we got on the docket for next. Uh, but, well, uh, next month, I mean, 
there maybe we'll do more than just one movie, but we do have Guardians of the Galaxy Volume yes. Three, yes, yes, which we got to get into. Maybe we'll come up with another movie, but back to the Marvel verse. Yeah, Wonderful. so uh, come back and get lost in movies again. All right.